Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Prime Answers. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance, the creator, the owner, the everything at Nintendo Prime. And, well, last week's debut episode went off, I think, without a hitch. I mean, viewership of it wasn't super high. I didn't really have much uh, in the title other than saying, hey, your Nintendo questions answered. And obviously I'll answer personal questions or things about other things in gaming as well. So remember, if you have any questions you would like to see featured on the show for next week, please leave a comment on this video. Also be sure to enter our Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch giveaway. Gleam.io link down in the description. Um, and before I get into questions, I always like to start off this series by kind of just talking about some some notes I have from throughout the week. Some ongoings in Nintendo Prime, things we tried out, things we have upcoming to this next week. And uh, first, you know, a little bit of feedback on uh, this show, at least to start. Um, I realize I kind of look pasty. The lighting here is making me look a, a little bit whiter <laughs> than I usually look. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do about that. I probably need to get some warmer lights. That's usually uh, the big solution for fixing this problem. The lights that I currently use aren't very warm um i could try you know different light bulbs in it uh, and if that doesn't work i could you know these aren't box lights i'm using so i could get some box lights i could try uh you know getting some reflecting stuff and like bouncing the light back a bit better than the current solutions i have which are like those white umbrellas um but there really isn't much i could do about that lighting situation and it is winter here in wisconsin so uh, my skin is you know lighter or paler i guess than usual um, but it's definitely not as white as it looks in these videos, but you know what? Um, we're just going to roll with it because this is what I got. I got to work with what I got and this is what I got. So, um, yeah. And it's weird too, because other videos I make with these same lights, I look darker. So it could be a camera thing. I've messed with the exposure on the camera and, uh, cause you can control how much light comes in and out and it didn't really make a difference. So, I mean, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the best I can over here. I'm a one-man show. I don't have anyone behind the scenes messing with the mixer for this audio. So if I end up peaking a little bit, I, I apologize. Um, I don't have you know anyone messing with the camera behind the scenes to, to fix things. So we just kind of roll with what we got. Um, so just to get a little bit into some stuff from this past week. If you remember last week, I mentioned I wanted to start getting Prime News out at 3 p.m. either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or every day if I'm doing five of them. And I think I've decided on a couple things. One, I'm going to stick to the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, unless there's enough news on a Tuesday and Thursday to do bonus episodes. So Prime News is now going to be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday show with bonus episodes that can happen on Tuesday and Thursday if enough news lands. And since Tuesdays and Thursdays happen to be the days that Nintendo does Nintendo Directs, obviously that means, you know, on Nintendo Directs we'd have a Prime News um, and stuff like that. So... Um, that's kind of the way I'm going to stick with it. It, it kind of seems that Tuesday and Thursday feel like lighter news days than Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, uh, we're going to stick with the Monday, Wednesday, Friday format, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, I de technically didn't do a Friday show. My Friday was crazy this past week. But the Monday and Wednesday shows, Monday came out exactly at 3 p.m., uh, Wednesday was a little delayed. Wednesday came out at 3.20, and that was just because I was having issues rendering the video. Um, my CPU is pretty much had it in my editing rig. Um, I'm going to do all my editing on my laptop this week, which is, starting with this video, which is a pain in the butt. But um, there's nothing I could really do uh, until I replace my MOBO, and I'm probably going to have to replace the motherboard and the CPU together. So that's just what's going to have to happen. Um I'm tired of the blue screens. I'm tired of the crashes during rendering. Yes, I'm saving all my projects, so even when it crashes, usually I can recover my project and not have to re-edit it, but sometimes I have to re-edit it, and that's a pain. So I'd rather just not deal with that and just stay safe, use my laptop, which, by the way, rendering on my laptop is fine. This is what I rendered on for E3. The problem is that um, it takes a lot longer to render on here than it does even on the computer with the crashes. Uh, so, and obviously when, anytime you're using a laptop like this, which really was, doesn't have the cooling solutions for proper video editing, um, it also wears down the laptop faster. So if I edit on this for, you know, months and months at a time, I could wear out the laptop too. And then I'm out of anything to edit on. So, so Friday show was a little, or Wednesday show was delayed about 20 minutes. Um, it happens, uh, again, we'll just have to work with what we got. And, uh, yeah, obviously the next major purchase is a new 
computer or not really a new computer a new cpu and motherboard i think the gpu is all right although that's been ramping up a lot lately um it could just be because of the increased heat that's happening off the cpu inside the whole case there's a lot of heat being pumped out of those fans and the radiators so i'm sure the the gpu itself is starting to raise and heat in there as well um that being said uh let's get into some other stuff um happening here um I think I've settled on a time for the morning video. If you guys remember, I wanted to start getting a morning video out. Um, you know, I experimented a little bit this week, not too much, but I, I was trying to figure out what time slot works both for you guys and for me before school, you know, for, for our younger audience, you know, during school, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to shoot for about 10 a.m. every day. I want to get out a morning video. One, this gives me time to make the video, uh, you know, beforehand, um, you know, the night before, schedule it out. Uh, give me a little bit of time off in the morning, or if for some reason something happened that night, you know, we had a live stream, or I was hanging out with my fiance, or whatever the case may be, had something going on with family or kids, uh, in the next morning, it gives me enough time from, uh, you know, what, about 7, 8, when I wake up, you know, gives me a couple hours to try to get a video. These videos in the morning are usually simpler ones. Uh, I'm looking to, to make them more discussion-oriented videos. Uh, stuff like that, you know, stuff where I'm just kind of chilling here, um, you know, using this background, maybe not sitting at this table, probably standing, but uh, using this background and just uh, talking about something that's on my mind. Uh, maybe it's a question I have for you guys and I give my thoughts on it and I ask for your guys' thoughts, or maybe it's a rant, maybe it's something of that nature, something that's just a more simpler to edit piece of uh, content to, to start our mornings. Now, obviously, the most complicated show we have is Prime News right now. That is the, the one that takes my, the most of my editing time. Uh, but th nothing wrong with that. I, I like the effort I'm putting into that show. I like how much better it's getting, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, that I, I think I settled on 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, a new video. Uh, 3 p.m. on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for sure, Prime News. Bonus episodes on Tuesday and Thursday when enough news is available to do it. And then on weekends, I think I'm going to just leave weekends as kind of free. You know, we're going to have the Prime Answers, which, by the way, this one's coming out later. Uh, it's supposed to come out on Saturdays originally. Now it's coming out, you know, late Sunday night. Might even be early, you know, Monday morning when it finally lands. But that's just because uh, it's been a busy weekend. And because my weekends, I spend a lot of time with family, I'm doing stuff, I'm just going to kind of leave them as a free verse thing. I'm either going to have content come out or I'm not. I want to have videos come out on, on Saturday and Sunday. But uh, outside of Prime Answers, I don't want to overcommit to Sundays or, or Saturdays. Um, I, I think I have the uh, This Week in Review that I'm doing every other Sunday. That seems to be working out well for me, so I'm going to keep that up. Um, but... Outside of that, I think we're just going to just keep the weekends free and open. Sometimes, some weekends I'll stream and, and play some games uh, and have, have videos come out for you guys. Other weekends, there might not be anything. Um, we're just going to kind of play that by ear because I need that kind of freedom um, on my weekends. So, whew, I think that's it for that part. Um, one thing I, I do want to address, there was a, a little bit of feedback on this series here, Prime Answers. Um, in particular, why there's not better editing on it. Um, mostly just people asking for me to put the questions on the screen, you know, either at the bottom, full screen, you know, on the side, whatever. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because one, I, you know, I could be answering, you know, 50 to 100 questions a week, and um, there's going to be more and more questions the more episodes we do, and the more people realize that I have this open dialogue with you guys. Uh, as an example, this week we have a lot of questions. Uh, so there's that. And on top of it, the idea of Prime Answers, while it's a long-form video, you know, an hour, two hours, however long it takes me to get through everything, the concept of this is to make it easy on me. This is supposed to be uh, where I just sit down, I, you know, I gather all this stuff, you know, usually the day of, and then I sit down, I, I record the video, I go in, in, into uh, editing, and basically the only thing I have to edit out are, are little breaks I maybe had to take, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> already in this video, it's already been cut out, but I had to go let my fiance in uh, because the garage door opener wasn't working, uh, stuff like that, or um, because this camera will only record about 30 minutes of video at a time, I have to like, you know, go up and hit the button again and resync the audio and keep going, uh, so... Just stuff like that. Uh, that. It's just to make editing as simple as possible for me. Uh, and I think that just in general works out. 
Um, now, some people might be wondering as well, you know, I talked about, you know, the next major purchase I need to make, uh, you know, hardware wise is probably a new CPU, a new motherboard. I've kind of been looking at the Ryzen 2700X, um, something like that, or Threadripper, which is obviously a lot more expensive, but obviously gets me in the line where even if I get the cheapest Threadripper now, you know, I can upgrade down the road when I have the money. Uh, I, I think the issue uh, some people might have when I say that is because weren't you just raising money for a capture card? And uh, it turns out that uh, a, a, I don't I don't know if I, I'd say a friend, but a, a good acquaintance of mine, um, uh, Advanced Media Network on Twitter, has uh, come forward to um, offer me a capture card. Uh, I think the Aver Media 4K or the Elgato HD Pro, which was the one I was going to buy. Um, but either one is, is fantastic. They're, they're awesome. They both basically do the same thing. And I was going to try to get a stream deck as well. I don't, I don't have one yet, but uh, now I'm going to kind of set aside buying a stream deck and focus on fixing the computer up, and then we'll get the stream deck. But, uh, yeah, what's nice about that capture card, you know, since he has one, and he's just going to give it to me, which is, I mean, it... I don't ever expect this kind of stuff, right, guys? Like, we have a P.O. Box. In fact, I'll put the P.O. Box down in the description for you guys. And we accept fan mail. You guys want to send me hardware. You guys want to send me games. You guys want to send me, um, you know, your drawings, your letters, uh, anything like that. You're free to do it. I don't expect anything. I just I have a public P.O. Box um, that I use for business purposes. I, I get a lot of my business stuff sent there. But um, I also use it, you know, for fan mail. So we haven't had any fan mail actually come in yet. Uh, I think some some of our fans have expressed interest in sending us stuff, but so like I'll put that down there, quick and easy. It's also on the About Us tab on YouTube as well uh, for anyone who wants to send in anything and is just looking for that address. Um, but that being said, um, I, I just thank you, Advanced Media Network, and thank you um, everyone else who supports this channel just by watching. Uh, not just you know, I, I know a lot of times I thank our patrons, I thank our super chatters, our donors. Um, our members, our Twitch Prime subs. But honestly, I just want to thank all of you because, you know, yeah, they help make financially what I do possible. But you guys watching the videos and subscribing to the channel, um, honestly, uh, is what motivates me the most. So thank you so much uh, for even watching a show like this, a long form video where I'm just kind of rambling on and on and on and answering questions. Um, very, very cool stuff. Um, so, yeah. Getting back to the minimalistic editing portion, um, again, it's just to make it easy on me. Um, I, I do this video in 4K, and it's taking me a long time to render it. Just make it nice and simple. Easy edit. Don't have to waste a lot of time editing on my weekend. Um, so it really works well for me in this current format. Maybe in the future, if I end up hiring an external editor uh, that wants to edit this for me, um, great. Uh, maybe, heck, maybe in the future, this might even be a live stream. Uh, where I don't even really read the comments. I only answer the, the, the pre-done questions. I've thought about making it a live stream. But, you know, I already do a lot of live streams where I have a talk with you guys, um, even though this is kind of a different format. So we'll see. Um, let me see here. What else did I want to address before we got... Oh, the Nintendo Prime Workout Challenge. How did it go this week? All right. So I completed the Workout Challenge, but I'm going to admit I gave myself two days of rest. And... One thing I forgot about working out, because it's been so long since I've committed to working out basically daily, is that when you're working out that hard, right, you know, 81 push-ups or, you know, 81 sit-ups, 86 push-ups, is that uh, every day <laughs> your body needs to rest, especially me when I'm as out of shape as I am. Um, by Monday, I was struggling. Um, I was able to pull it off on uh, on Sunday still. On Monday, I struggled to get half of it done, and I told myself, okay, let's put, let's get through it. So I got through it all, and then Tuesday, I took a day off. And then I did it uh, Thursday, or I did it Wednesday, Thursday. Then I took a day off on Friday to let my body rest for the reset on Saturday. Um, obviously, if you don't, <laughs> don't know, the Nintendo Prime Workout Challenge didn't happen on Saturday. So what I'm going to do is, is um, there was, it was just a crazy weekend. So anytime that happens where I can't reset the workout, which also sucks for me, um, I'm basically going to just continue the prior week's workout. So here for week two on the Nintendo Prime Workout Challenge, it's still going to be 81 um, sit-ups and 86 push-ups, uh, you know, as many days as you can possibly pull off this week. Remember, give yourself rest. Be healthy about it. Drink lots of water, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, don't overdo it. Switch to crunches if you need to. I know for some people, like, the, the strain on the back with sit-ups is, is a lot. Um, it, it was with me, but I, I, I got through it all. And I'm going to continue to get through it all. I already got them done today. 
Uh, we hitting it hard again tomorrow. So uh, taking my rest day Tuesday. I think the Tuesday, Friday rest days work really, really well for me. Might need to move it more to like a Wednesday, Thursday, but you know, um, well, well, I'll play around with that uh, for my personal workout needs. Um, and as I get stronger here, you know, I probably could do the three days in a row without a day of rest. So uh, we'll 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 see what happens. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sorry that it, we didn't do that stream this week. Uh, it just it, it was a crazy weekend, and I honest, I went to a movie because to the new Fantastic Beast movie because I have not gotten out of the house in over a month. Not even kidding. Outside of like trips to the grocery store, pretty much been a hermit. <laughs> so I needed to get out and do something. Um, it's getting colder out, which means, you know, there's less to do, but still. Um, let's see here. Uh, how many videos did we do, you know, since the last uh, Prime Answers? Well, 10. Uh, we're, we're, I'm aiming to do at least two a day. I want to do that all, all that bonus one at night as well. Uh, that's either a single news topic or you know something else. Maybe it's an op-ed editorial, whatever. Um, that's something that is still kind of up in the air that for us doing that. But hey, we hit ten videos, which is technically more than one per day, uh, and that's without doing a video yesterday. So uh, it could have been at least eleven. Um, so let's. I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. I want to hit 14 for sure every week. Uh, so um, starting uh, on Monday, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have for sure have two out. We'll have the podcast and the prime news, um, and then hopefully a, a, an extra video on Monday. So that we'll kick our week off with three. Um, plus this video technically is landing on Sunday, so I guess it's part of this week. But um, yeah, I I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. We're getting better. We came off a week where it was just one a day. Now we're slightly over one. Now let's get to two a day. And uh, move forward with that 10 a.m., 3 p.m. schedule. And then maybe like a 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, bonus video. Or maybe it'll be a late night video. Maybe it'll be after live streams are done. You know, an 11 p.m., a midnight video, something. Um, we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure out a schedule for the late night one that works best for me and what kind of video I want that to be. Um, let's see here. Um, so another interesting note that you guys might not care about. Revenue is actually down 40% month over month. Um I, you know, and within the same time, similar time periods, by the way, not just like looking at all of last month compared to all of this month. Like that's not a good way to compare. You want to look at the time periods. Um, some of this is just because, uh, I think gaming, game streaming, uh, because of my broken capture card hasn't been happening much this month. Um, and a big proponent of the game streaming is I usually do shots, um, shots of alcohol and stuff like that. And that, you know, makes people want to donate because they want to see, you know, so see me get sloshed if possible. Um, which hasn't happened in quite some time, actually. Um, I'm sitting there staring up uh, on, my, on my shelf up here with my tequila and uh, and rum and stuff like that. But it hasn't actually happened in a while. Um, so there's that. Uh, you're just not game streaming en enough to get that kind of extra revenue in. Um, and while the workout stream you know, last week did very, very well, uh, that's once a week, right? <laughs> so... I think beyond the live streams, I'm actually down on ad revenue because viewership is down. Um, and, and that's something I just need to address by getting my videos out more consistently. Not having a day off like you know yesterday, as much as it was nice to have that quote-unquote day off, it really wasn't a day off for me in general. It was a day off for Nintendo Prime, but I was still super, super stressed. Really long day. Um, I... I, I need to get back to a level of consistency that's going to lead to viewership going up. What is nice is the average views per video was up this week. So um, our, our viewership is slowly rising, and I like that. that. That's showing actual growth beyond just the sub count. Um, so continuing that, and I think the fact that I was being more consistent in getting certain videos out, although I need to get that third prime news out again, um, is going to very really, really help. Really, really help in general. Um, so again, thank you all you guys for watching. And, uh, I think, you know, that 40% drop, it's on me. I, I have not been producing content at the level, the quality and the numbers that I want. And that's probably why we're down month over month. Uh, so hopefully we'll fix that heading into the holidays. Uh, I already talked about my PC trouble. Oh, I want to mention we do have, uh, community forums. Um, they are, I think it's forums.nintendoprime.net. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Uh, it's a great place, you know, 
I, as much as I like the discords and all the stuff of the world, I honestly prefer conversations over forums. It gives you time to gather your thoughts together, throw images in your posts, video links, all that stuff. It can be longer form types of communication. I really like that. So we do have a community forums that I'm you know going to throw down there. You guys can go check it out if you want. We talk about a bunch of Nintendo stuff there. I really want to gather as much of the Nintendo Prime community there as we can to talk about the news beyond like you know, um, just a video. I know I realize we have these conversations about the news in these individual videos, but it's like that video happens and then within hours, you know, we're kind of done with it, right? It's time to move on to the next news. Whereas in the forum, you can keep talking about that same piece of news or updates to that news for days and days and days. It's also a great way for us to share more news than maybe I'm already covering um, together. And in fact, your comments and stuff in those forums could actually end up in some news videos that I do, especially if you end up bringing news to my attention that we're going to be using in a Prime News episode, um, and you're the person that brought it to my attention through the community forums, I'll probably end up, um, you know, giving you uh, some props for that and linking to your your, your post and uh, all that stuff and giving you a shout out. So I appreciate that because right now all the news I basically find myself. Um, but you know, sometimes little bits of news trickles through the cracks. I try to pay attention to everything, but I'm only one person. Uh, so it's nice to have all these extra eyeballs out there. Let me know, Hey, what's the important stuff happening today that I should not miss that I should be talking about. Um, so yeah. And, uh, last thing I want to cover is E3 2019. Uh, a few people, um, not really specific questions, but people wondering, uh, my plans for E3 2019, uh, not just cause Sony dropped out, which doesn't really affect us. Uh, but because uh, people just want to know if we're going back. They really liked our E3 coverage. They liked the videos. Uh, they liked the vlogs we did because we did like a daily vlog of uh, all of our ongoings and the people we met and all that stuff. And honestly, um, I'm not sure if we're going to E3 next year. I am working under the assumption that I'm planning to go. So what does that mean? Uh, I'm trying to get it so we can qualify as media through NintendoPrime.net because qualifying as a YouTube channel is nearly impossible. <laughs> you need 100,000 subscribers, which we don't have. I mean, maybe we'll have by E3, but maybe we won't. So let's not assume our growth there. But you also need 50,000 views for a video, which like usually channels that have, I don't know, 300, 400,000 you know, subscribers are the ones that get 50K per video. So we're probably going to qualify as a YouTube channel probably anytime and maybe maybe a decade from now <laughs> we'll qualify if we keep growing and don't and don't just stagnate. But for websites it's way different. It's only 10,000 unique views per month and you know we we end up being able to get a, a media pass. So I'm going to be uh, really focusing on that here as we start closing out November as well, trying to get more news up on there and get that shared on Twitter and our Facebook page, which I never advertise, but we do have a Facebook page. Um, you can just look it up, Nintendo Prime, all one word, uh, camel case style. Um, so the big thing with E3 uh, this year is that it was completely fan-funded. Uh, you guys came together, Be Righteous especially, but it wasn't just him. There, there were dozens and dozens of you that came together to support our trip to E3. We raised a ton of money, and it was ultra expensive this year because we weren't ready for E3. Um, we didn't have the laptop to edit with. This was, you know, a near $1,000 purchase. Didn't have the camera. Um, which we do need to get a new mic for before next year, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, we didn't have the camera and the lens. You know, that was another 800, 900 bucks. Uh, and the stand to go along with it. Uh, and the, 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 S, the proper SD card. I probably could use a second SD card if I'm being honest, but whatever. We, we made do with one, so we could probably make do with one again. Um, we had to, um, I, I, technically, I need to get new luggage, but that's, I'm not going to, you know, have you guys pay for that. Then there's the hotel, right? We were there for, five nights or six nights or something like that. So there's the hotel, which is which is expensive. Although I do like the hotel we were at because the internet was fast enough at that hotel for us to live stream uh, the press conferences and do live reactions to that. And I really like doing that. Um, so that, it's funny. As I was doing this, people were like, what's the point of you being at E3 when you're doing this? Well, because there wasn't anything else going on for me to do it, you know, on that Monday especially. That Monday, E3 is not happening on Monday. It happens on Tuesday. So when all those press conferences are happening on Monday, why wouldn't we be live streaming and reacting to it? Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. I think you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, and I want to do that again. And that particular hotel had nice enough internet. So that's, and, and it really was within a decent drive of uh of the convention center so i think that's uh, and it was in a good part of town that's a really big deal a good part of town so uh it's probably a hotel we, we might stay at again 
next year if we do go. Uh, and then obviously the plane tickets. And there was two of us going, which, you know, makes everything cost a little more. It doesn't make the hotel room cost too much more, but it does make, you know, you know another plane ticket because I had Eric come with. Because um, I'm not going to go to LA by myself. It's just not, that's not happening. I'm not, I'm not going all the way across the country from Wisconsin to California by myself. Uh, plus, Eric helps with the coverage. He's the one. Um, he was in the vlog. He was. He got. A lot, he got like half the footage we did. He he got that footage. Um, he did all the footage. We had a FIFA 19 on Switch. So, um, like Eric is instrumental instrumental to my mental well being as well as um, just getting stuff done and me not getting overwhelmed as much as I, I was still overwhelmed, but um, a little bit less so than the last time I went back in 2016. So the big thing is if I'm going to go next year is I still can't afford to go. Um, it's still an expensive trip, but uh, it'll be cheaper than this trip because I already have a lot of the equipment I need. So basically, I'll focus on getting a media pass. By the way, we had to buy gamer passes. That was five hundred bucks. Um, but this year, you know, it's basically gonna be flight, hotel, food. That's basically going to be that's going to be the only expenses. Oh, and and the rental car. We did rent a car, which is very very nice to have a rental car. So uh, and we got paid for parking every day. Parking sucks. Like twenty bucks a day it sucks. So rental car. Um, hotel, parking, food. Basically, all, all we're going to need, which is still expensive, by the way. We're still looking at, you know, $2,500 to $3,000. So it's still not cheap. Um, but, man, we ended up raising like $4,500, almost $5,000, uh, and a lot of that was for equipment. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you. Do you guys uh, think it would be worthwhile for me starting on January 1st of 2019 to maybe put up a fundraiser and see if we can raise money to go to E3 again? Um, I didn't think we could pull it off this year. I was pushed into, you know, a lot of you guys said, yeah, do it. I did it. We ended up getting the money for it. What also sucks is when we raise the money for it, it means all donations um, are basically going towards it. And uh, that means I don't get any donation revenue for half the year. <laughs> um, so that's not fun um, since I do, you know, I use the donation revenue, uh, you know, monthly. So, um it's just something that that I have to seriously consider if I want to do again. Uh, I do want to go to E3. That's not a question. And I think our coverage at E3 is only going to be better when we have a media pass. I felt like we did a lot. Uh, we had a lot of gameplay out. We got a lot of previews. We met a lot of people. Uh, the vlogs were awesome. I think that our E3 content was really, really good. Uh, and obviously, it can get better. And I want it to be better. Uh, and it's only going to get better if we keep going. So... Every year is a new learning experience, and uh, we definitely learned that media passes, we need to make sure we get one. Um, so I'm just going to kind of sit back and uh, leave it up to you guys on if you think we should raise the money for it, uh, because it, it's an expensive trip. And it, honestly, despite the dozens and dozens of people that helped pay for us to go, if Be Righteous didn't give us like $2,500, we probably wouldn't have been able to go. And uh, I, I can't look at Be Righteous Right now on the camera, I'd be like, man, you better support like that again. Like, that's crazy. Anyone to give any amount of money is crazy. To even give a dollar to me is like, why? <laughs> what am I doing that makes you want to give me money? Uh, but $2,500 was a lot. So I don't I don't know that it's realistic for me to expect uh, to raise that kind of money again. But um, I don't know. That's not, uh, It's kind of out of my hands. It's kind of up to you guys if you think it's worthwhile. Obviously, if we if we did the raising and we ended up not getting to it, I would take that money and reinvest it into the studio here. You know, better warmer lights like I was talking about. Um, you know, maybe the stuff for my editing rig. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll sponsor some giveaways out, out, of, out of the money that we, we raise. Stuff like that. But um, I wouldn't spend it on myself since it was being raised specifically for E3. And then if we ended up not getting enough, you know. That, that's kind of the whole thing. Like, I always try to be transparent when we raise that money because I can't refund it. Um, it just it, it costs me money to refund it, so it doesn't make sense to cost everyone money. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, let's get into your questions. You guys have waited long enough. And these questions, uh, this first batch come from our Patreon slash YouTube members. Uh, first comes from GameHound, and he says, What is something you like about Let's Go and something you dislike? Don't know if that counts as two questions. It's okay. Um, did get Let's Go Eevee for those those wondering. Um, let me see. Uh, something I like about Let's Go. I actually enjoy the streamlined nature of catching Pokemon. I like that it's simplified. I like that it doesn't waste my time. Um, I kind of like how it works to catch shinies. Haven't really caught one yet. You have to get like 10 plus Pokemon in a row. And you can kind of keep going, catch them in a row to get better stats and better stats and better stats to try to get the perfect stat Pokemon. And even then, it's just a chance. Um, I really like that. It's more streamlined. It's easier to understand. Um, I, I just I enjoy 
the the streamlined nature of the game. It just it just makes Pokemon uh, more digestible for me. And I know there's a lot of Pokemon fans are gonna be like, no, that's what we hate the most. And it's like that's fine. You can hate it. Um, you're gonna get Gen Eight this year, and it won't be that streamlined. At least not as streamlined as this. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of really really like the streamlined nature of the game. Uh, the biggest thing I dislike is probably the fact that I don't have the option to use the Pro Controller right now. Um, I need to play more to find some more. You know, there's probably some things I can nitpick at, nitpick at right now. But um, just the the fact that there's already a control scheme in place for the Pro Controller in handheld mode that you can't use on your TV. Like, the you know, the, the Pro Controller has gyros, so you can still do the little gyro moving around the Pokemon like this and hit a button. It's That, that sh- still should be a thing. And I don't know why they're forcing you to have to use motion controls on TV. I think as an option, it's great. And uh, I think the Pokeball Plus controller has some really cool things about it. But... Um, I, I do think that they should have just enabled um, the pro controller use for this game, or you know, you know, twin twin Joy Cons in the in the grip. But uh, that that's kind of my biggest criticism of the game right now. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing, you know, Let's Go Eevee you know, and Pikachu. I guess I, I'll just bring up some of the stuff that Pikachu has that Eevee doesn't, because they're the same game. Um, so I am going to be reviewing it as well. That review, uh, I have to wait for the new capture card to come in. Uh, once that's in, um, I'll probably need a week or so to capture footage um, and and formulate all my thoughts. But, yeah, I plan to get out the review before Smash Bros. lands. So probably uh, early December, that very f- you know, first week of December. I do want to do more game reviews, by the way, but um, that's something that we're just going to have to wait until we hit a goal on Patreon because game reviews are very time-consuming um, and... Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of other content to make. So uh, committing to game reviews when uh, half the time you can't even make money off them is a problem. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, we, we have a goal. I think we're, I think we're at $200 on Patreon. I think if we hit our $300 goal monthly, you'll get at least one major game review a month. Um, you know, I'm already going to do the Let's Go Peach, Let's Go Eevee, and I'll probably advertise the fact that if you want more of these reviews, please go support us on Patreon. So then, you know, if you want me to review Smash Bros. for December, if you want me to review, you know, Fire Emblem Three Houses when it comes out, if you want me to review uh, whatever, whatever games you guys feel like you wanted me, me, me to review, um, I, I can guarantee, you know, one a month if we hit that goal. Um, it could be more some months. Like if it's a smaller game I'm doing that month, maybe I could do two smaller games. You know, if it's like an indie title, maybe I hit on two indie titles, something like that. Or if it's, or if you're having me review Yoshi's Crafted World, then maybe I can review an indie title on top of that that month. You know, we, we kind of make it work. Um, let me see. Your next question comes from Duo. I'm still going to call you Duo Master. I know you changed your name. I can't pronounce it. So um, first he says, any good Eric stories you can share? Um... I mean, there's a lot of good stories. How many of <laughs> the ones I can share? Um, Eric's a pretty pretty open book, but I'm trying to think of one that might be more gaming relevant. I mean, we, I, I can tell you one thing. When we were kids, we were totally, uh, you know how like Jeff Keighley's like the Doritos and Mountain Dew Pope because of the sponsorships he had back at Game Trailers when they used to do E3 events? <laughs> I was the Dorito and, and Mountain Dew kid, and so was Eric. We would go to, like, midnight launches of any game we wanted, and then we would just stay up all night from, like, midnight to, like, I don't even know, bedtime the next day. We'd just pull all-nighters, uh, and we would just be downing the Mountain Dew and Doritos like crazy, getting those controllers all grimy. I remember uh, <laughs> I remember having to go to the bathroom to wet some, some, uh, some, <laughs> some toilet paper so we could wipe off the controllers because the buttons were starting to stick. Oh, it was bad. Um... So whenever when people are like, yeah, like Mountain Dews and Doritos don't even go that well together. I don't know. It what, what, like it, it, maybe it was a '90s thing, you know. The, it probably was like a '90s thing to be honest. Where Mountain Dew and Doritos, like people just had it together. It didn't matter if you were a gamer or not. Just like that was like the kid snack. We always wanted Mountain Dew and Doritos. Um, so uh, we did it whether we were gaming or not. But especially when we were gaming, like that's we we would do that, and then we'd have like some frozen pizzas. So it was just like the worst garbage you could have, um, and whatever man got us through many a gaming session um as i got older now i if i if i do an all-night gaming session which i haven't done since breath of the wild launch of breath of the wild i think was the last time i did like i stayed up and did like an all-night gaming session for you guys um actually i did it for for zelda informer back then not for you guys so that that kind of sucks um but yeah when i did that um that was fun and i use balls uh the drink b-a-w-l-s i love that drink to death it's a great all-night drink um you know so that, that that's probably what i would do in the future if i did an all-nighter or a marathon i thought about doing a marathon by the way but um gosh 
I don't know if I can get through it. <laughs> and like, as much as I want to do a marathon, like for charity or something, my channel is just not big enough, right? Like, um, this is my job. So, um, it would still probably be to, just to, just to, you know, increase my revenue for that month. But, um, man, I don't even know what the hell I'd marathon. It'd have to be a new game. Um, what could I marathon for like 24 hours, like a 24 hour marathon? I'm trying to think what I could do. If I could, if I can line up babysitters for my kids and all that's taken care of, what could I do for 24 hours? Hmm. Like I'm thinking about a new game. Maybe Fire Emblem might be a good one to do that on. I don't know. Pokemon 8th Gen. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Duo also said, um, uh, has there been any specific game that keeps popping up that you want to go back and play? I know there's a lot, but try to single out one. I mean, Breath of the Wild is usually the one that I like to go back and play because I'm not done with it yet. I'm not done with the master mode, and I haven't 100%ed it, so that's the one I really go back um, and make a conscious effort at least, you know, a few times a month to play. Um, if there's, like, games, you know, from my childhood, uh, the one that always crops in my mind I want to go back and play is Conker's Bad Fur Day. I don't have a copy of it on N64 or Xbox, so uh, that's one that always comes up that I really want to go back and, do, and and play. But besides that, they're really I, I'm one of those people that when I play a game, like when I play this game and I get to the end and I and I beat all the master trainers um, and I get all the Pokemon, even if I don't have shinies and all the best versions of all the Pokemon, um, I'll probably dabble in multiplayer a little bit and then I'll be done. Um, I probably won't play Let's Go Eevee again because uh, that's like once I once I feel like I've completed a game. I don't really go back to it. Uh, that's what's so interesting about today's world with the Fortnites and the Warframes coming out, um, which come out in a couple of days, is that uh, the games don't end. <laughs> so um, they have infinite replay value, which I like, but I don't want that in every game. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm done with the game, I'm done with the game. Breath of the Wild is different. I purposely told myself um, it's my favorite game of all time. So I told myself that with Breath of the Wild, I'm not going to rush through the master mode like I did. I rushed, I, I, put, a, I put like 175 hours and I rushed through uh, the, the main mode, um, you know, the normal mode and did all the DLC and all that stuff. But I didn't 100% it. I did that on purpose because I knew I wanted 100% in master mode. And I told myself I'm not going to rush the 100% in master mode. I'm, it's something I'm going to play for years and years and years because I enjoy that game so much. And when I am finally done... Um, I'm planning to do, I don't know if it's a review. No, Arlo just is still releasing parts of like his massive, really late Breath of the Wild review. But I want to do like a, a massive, um, long conversation about uh, Breath of the Wild. When I finally 100% and finish, I don't know if it'll be a podcast or a separate video, but I really want to talk about uh, and just go super in depth on the game um, and some of the Zelda lore and it, it, it's going to be an interesting video uh, when I do that. So that's one that, that I do actively go back and, and play. Um, all right, next up, uh, this question comes from Edward Norton. Uh, he says, favorite superhero um, that appeared in a CW DC show? <sighs> Man. It, it was Arrow, um, and now... Flash, it's kind of a toss-up between those two, if I'm honest. You know, I've watched all the various shows, um, but I'm I'm really, you know, I yeah, I got I mean it's Arrow or Flash. I mean I'm a sucker for Arrow because um, you know, I still love that show, even though I know I know I'm subconsciously aware uh, it's not as good as it used to be, but um I still really like it a lot. So uh yeah, Arrow and Flash, I go back and forth on which one's my favorite, you know, Barry Allen or or you know. God, now I forgot. See, look at it. Now, now I forgot the, the main character. Oliver. I should know that. We named our son after him. Fun fact. Um, so, I mean, I guess because I named my son after him, I have to uh, I have to go with Arrow, right? You have to go with Arrow and Oliver. Um, let's see here. Uh, he also said, uh, what's your favorite It's Always Sunny in, uh, what is that, Philadelphia, right? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode. Couldn't tell you. I've only seen about 10 of them. I liked every single one of them, but I never really sat down to watch them all. And I don't remember any specific episodes from any specific seasons. So it's a show that I feel like I've missed out on that I could probably go back to when I'm older. Like Seinfeld. I watched a lot of Seinfeld when I was older. Um, I feel like I can go back and watch that show later, like just marathon the hell out of it. Uh, but right now, I, I, don't, I couldn't tell you because I don't know enough about it. Um, same with like Big Bang Theory. I've seen, I've seen more than 10 episodes of Big Bang Theory, but I couldn't even tell you a specific episode from a specific season in that. Uh, and I really want to marathon that. It, the last season's happening. Uh, once that's done, I'm eventually going to go back and marathon all the seasons I missed. Um, and then uh, his last thing says, uh, did y'all's parents uh, 
catch you drunk when you were a teenager? No, because I didn't drink when I was a teenager. Uh, my dad had me try a beer when I was like eight or nine. Uh, they were, we had some family over. They were drinking. Uh, I was very curious, and he saw me staring at the alcohol. My dad's like, here, try my beer. So I took a sip. It was disgusting. Might be something I do to my own kids, if I'm being honest, because my, you know, when you're a kid, you're always curious about it, and you hear about drinking sometimes, and you wonder about it. Then, like, you taste a really nasty beer, and it's like, ugh. That's what they're drinking? Oh, oh I'd rather have an, an apple juice, man. Um, so <laughs> so uh, that turned me off from having alcohol at all. Uh, I did not drink until I was 21. On my 21st birthday, whole 1.75 of UV blue and a 24-pack of Mountain Dew downed it by myself in my room. Um, I was pretty hammered and pretty wired. So that was the thing that happened. And then I went to my first bar uh, the Friday after my birthday and had a blast. And that's when I started going to bars all the time because it was, it was so much fun. Um, but it's, everyone's different. And, like, when I went to the bar, I didn't have any friends to go with. Like, Eric was off in college in a different town, so I didn't have any friends to go with. So I, I went literally to the bar knowing no one. And uh, some of my best my, – my fiancé came, came out of that time in my life. Um, my, uh, one of my other really good friends, Nikki, uh, she came out of that time in my life. So like I have, you know, I, I basically wasn't a drama person at a bar. I, I sat there by myself for the longest time. And then I finally got the courage to start dancing. And then once I started dancing, it all went, it all went, you know, uphill from there for me, because uh, I really, really enjoy dancing and karaoke and, um, drinking. It was fun. I still enjoy that stuff. I just, uh. I have responsibilities now. I got three children. I can't just like go out willy nilly do that stuff anymore. My fiance got to do it a little bit this past Friday. Uh, she went out with her sister and had some drinks and did some dancing and karaoke, which I was totally jealous of. But we didn't have a babysitter, so guess who got to be the babysitter? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, these next questions come uh, from YouTube. Um, this first one's really really long. Um, this one comes from Corey. And he says, what do you think Nintendo's mindset is in regards to not having more apps, not having features, standard on other consoles slash electronic devices, and not providing simple fan-requested features that would please so many people with little effort? We just got YouTube, but why did it take so long? What possible benefit does it serve by not having a web browser or Twitch or Netflix, especially when their past two consoles and portables had such things? Why can't they make a system-wide achievement and trophy system? They already do stamps in individual games, but they're even more meaningless than the others, simply because they're not connected to your account and not consistent between games. I can go back and see a history of pretty much every game and the progress I made in them since 2005 with my Xbox profile, and though I don't actively search out or search out achievements, I do like to see what else I may have missed and... Uh, see if what I was into in the past and reflect on how my gaming tastes have evolved. On top of that, it's fun to see side-by-side comparisons of what myself and my friends have accomplished. I agree on that front, by the way. I do like, I do like on Xbox and PlayStation looking at, um, you know, just, just comparing, like not, not for bragging rights, but just to see, um, you know, what your friends play compared to you. I think, I think it's just fun. People like comparing things. It's kind of fun like that. Um, there's no drawback to it. So again, why does Nintendo just ignore it? It may not interest everyone, but it has no drawbacks. What about friend codes and the ability to meet new people online? The idea that they're trying to prevent a five-year-old from some bad stuff is nice and all, but parental controls could do the job while not handicapping everyone else's experience. Guides slash clans, partying up, and general communication are virtually non-existent, and it's entirely unnecessary. We all know how stupid the phone app is, but why does Nintendo refuse to acknowledge this? People make mistakes, companies make mistakes, but the sign of a good company or a good person is their ability to admit their error, learn their lesson, and improve from them. Being stubborn and doubling down on mistakes and dictating to their fans instead of working for their fans is a bad business practice that has hurt Nintendo many times before. Their online service is also a glaring sign they still don't appreciate the potential that online offers them. What's worse is that unlike Sony and especially Microsoft, Nintendo doesn't seem to be building towards a longer-term, multi-generation service that carries over each console cycle and retains all that they and the players have invested in. What happens when the Switch successor comes out? Will it take several years for them to launch a new service once again? Will we have to wait for the same old games to once again trickle out each month to buy? And will we once again have to rebuy those games in the first place? With Microsoft, I feel safe purchasing digitally since the store is the store, regardless of console, 
apps, games, profiles, settings, etc. from past and present will be available to me no matter what system I'm using uh, or if it's on the Xbox One or its successor. I don't have to worry about the virtual console disappearing or my games being tied to a defunct console with servers taken down. And now OG Xbox games as well as 360 are backwards compatible, which is a really, really cool thing that Microsoft is doing better than anybody else. Um, come on, Nintendo should be a leader in this area, but they seem to be uninterested. And while Nintendo used to be a pioneer in creating new genres slash genre defining games, they avoid many genres and demographics entirely. The biggest games in the world the past decade have been Minecraft, PUBG, League of Legends, GTA V, Overwatch, Fortnite, World of Warcraft, Rocket League, and so on. But Nintendo had a shot to be a pioneer in this vein uh, due to neglecting online. If they want to capture the world in a similar way, they could. Hell, if they made a Pokemon game embracing the best of what online has to offer, that could hit record levels of success for the franchise. On a smaller but almost more meaningful level, expanding the genres they cover could help immensely. I get colorful and rainbows and cartoons and family, but why can no side studios... Uh, can they go a different route? Where's our Perfect Dark FPS, our Eternal Darkness horror game, our Conker's platformer? Anyways, this is more of a rant now than a question. Guess I just need an event. Well, yes, Corey, you did need an event. Um, I, I'm not going to say I disagree with much of what you said. Uh, you kind of summarized all of the criticisms, I think, that are uh, perfectly valid towards Nintendo. Um, just in Nintendo in general, let alone the Switch. Um, I mean, this doesn't take away from how great the Switch is. Uh, what it does is it means the Switch isn't as great as it could be. So for as awesome as Nintendo Switch is and Nintendo, there is massive room for improvements, uh, especially with the Nintendo Switch Online service. Um, I know that I don't care as much about achievements, but I don't, you know, Nintendo still offers them in really weird ways. Did you know there's actually my Nintendo achievements that you get like coins for, for some of their mobile games? Like their mobile games have a better achievement, like reward program in it than Switch? Like, what? I don't, I don't get that. Um, it's, it's weird. It's Nintendo's just a weird company. They like to do things their own way. And like, because Nintendo missed the boat on online, which they had online back on, uh, well, technically they had online dating back to the NES, you know, when they had the, the BS Zelda experiment with the satellite stuff. But, um, you know, GameCube had fantasy star online with, a, with an internet adapter. You could play that. And I think there was, like, two other online games as well. So, like, Nintendo was there in the very early days, but they never embraced it until, like, nobody really did, honestly, until Xbox did. Then Xbox embraced it, and then Sony's like, oh, no, we got to embrace that too. Um, and then it just kind of blew up from there. Uh, Nintendo never got on board with that back then. And it, while it feels like they're playing catch-up, I don't even know that it's catch-up anymore. I think it's Nintendo does really, really well when they are the ones that pioneered something. Um, so... Nintendo didn't invent, you know, this hybrid system, right? You know, playing at home and on the go. But Nintendo popularized it. Nintendo didn't invent motion controls, but they popularized it. Because they popularized it, they're going to go all in on it and do their best, and there'll probably be another another Switch and another this and that, and they're going to do awesome, and they're going to do it better than anybody else. But when it comes to the online stuff, they didn't pioneer it. And because they didn't pioneer it, they just don't want to do what anyone else is doing. When really, they should be like, look, we are pioneering in other ways. We are leading gaming in other ways. So if we could do what everyone else is doing, plus do the things we're doing, it would like double or triple your success, in my opinion. But um, they don't view it that way. Nintendo views it as, if we didn't come up with it first, we're not going to do it. It's honestly, I mean, I'm shocked they have online play at all, <laughs> if we're being honest, because they didn't invent online play. Although, I mean, maybe they did with BSL. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, Nintendo's just a, a very, a very strange company in that way, right? Like, you know, we talked about earlier, the earlier question, like, you know, why can't we use a pro controller with Pokemon Let's Go Eevee on, you know, on the TV when in handheld, uh, you don't, you don't need to use anything but the, but a little bit of gyro to just point your screen at the Pokemon and then you hit a button to throw instead of having to do the throwing motion. I don't mind the throwing motion being there. It honestly hasn't really bothered me and I've gotten pretty good at it, uh, but Still, the option should be there when they've already built in the controls for it. Uh, but Nintendo didn't want to do it for whatever reason. Game Freak didn't want to do it for whatever reason. And I, I just, I don't get, like, they can always advertise it with the Pokeball Plus. They can advertise it with the Joy-Cons, but just have it there as a control option for those that have a Pro Controller. Um, uh, or, you know, those that want to use both Joy-Cons in the grip. Um, but Nintendo just doesn't like doing what everyone else does. They want to do their own thing, so... It's awesome at times, and it's bad at times. 
Um, and it's kind of sad that Xbox um, has the best backwards compatibility. You know, that they have a service where you can just get a bunch of those games for a flat fee. Or, like, here's the thing. Nintendo offers a service, right? We pay 20 bucks a year, and you get access to some NES games in a growing library that we aren't sure if it's going to ever carry over to the next system. But Xbox has a service where you get to play those games, plus they let you have full backwards compatibility with everything else. Now, for Nintendo, that's a lot harder to do. We have to remember... Um, the Xbox always used the disc format. Nintendo has used different size cartridges. Uh, they've used, you know, mini discs. They've used standard DVDs. They've used their own proprietary stuff on Wii U. Uh, they're, on, they're using a different format for physical than they did like on 3DS and DS. So well, it's Nintendo themselves has kind of made it um, really, really difficult to offer that native, that native style of uh, backwards compatibility. But that doesn't mean they should have offered it for, you know, digital things like virtual console. Um, they did let you, let us bring over, like, all of our Wii library to the Wii U, but you had to boot into what was basically a Wii to play it. And that made no sense. Uh, Nintendo just did that because they didn't want to figure out how to make it better. Um, and, uh, like, the best backwards compatibility was probably the Wii itself with GameCube for, like, you know, over half of the Wii's life cycle, every Wii came with GameCube ports, and you could just stick your GameCube disc in and play. It was awesome, natively. Not a separate mode, not having to reboot the system, but, you know, th those days are of yesteryear. Now Xbox is the one doing that and, and not Nintendo. So I I don't know. I feel you. I feel you on your frustrations. Uh, I feel like you said mostly what needs to be said. I don't know that I need to, need to say much more. You know, on, on the media app front... Um, uh, why it took so long for us to get YouTube is beyond me. Why it took us so long to get Hulu is beyond me. Why it's gonna, why we might not have Netflix when we have it on 3DS is beyond me. I don't know what's going on. Um, I, you know, some of it, you know, with those programs, isn't in Nintendo's control, but a lot of it is because uh, Nintendo's had these apps back on Wii. So if Nintendo really wanted these apps, they'd be there, um, but they're not, and I don't know why. I just don't know. I just don't know. So um, it, I get your frustrations. I agree. Um, that doesn't detract from all the great things with Switch. But, I mean, I think you brought up a lot of fair criticisms. And uh, I feel like your criticisms are coming from a place of love. It's coming from you wanting Nintendo to be better. Folks, when you criticize Nintendo, this is how you do it. The way Corey just did it, this is how you criticize. You are giving feedback that's constructive, giving examples of ways it could be better. That is how you criticize things, folks. I know I don't always get a good critic. Like, Corey's almost better at it than me. Maybe you should have your own YouTube channel, Corey. But um, I really enjoyed reading that. And I thank you so much for submitting a whole slew of questions that I didn't answer them all because I think you gave pretty good answers yourself. Uh, the next one comes from Yasuki on YouTube. He says, after owning the Switch for nearly two years, about a year and uh, eight months, so it's still five months away, um, how do you feel about it? Do you feel the same? Do you feel it needs improvement? Or do you think it's fine the way it is? Give a short re-review. Um, Service-wise, it, it could be better. Um Online needs to be better, period. Um, you know, ha having more more media apps need to be better, period. We need to have messaging, period. We need to have localized voice chat for games, not just the free-to-play games, but Nintendo games too. Like, why are the free-to-play games having better voice chat than than Nintendo's own games? That makes no sense to me, and we pay for access to that app. Makes no sense. Um, you know, that, that kind of stuff needs to get better. Um, I think the UI is fine. Having themes would be nice. I don't think themes are as big a deal as some people make them out to be, but they are nice to have as a user option. Um, even if they're only pre-approved themes that you have to buy from like a shop from them, that's fine. We had to do that on 3DS. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, let me see what else. Um, design wise, it could use a, you know, a better kickstand for sure. Uh, I don't have the loose Joy-Con problem like some do, but I guess the way some people hold it in handheld creates a loose Joy-Con problem. Um, you know, it'd be nice for a little redesign on that. Um, they did fix the D-pad on newer Pro controllers, um, and they fixed the wireless interference with the left Joy-Con that was there at launch. Um, I'm not noticing as many switches bending anymore, which means it tells me they got better at manufacturing the dock, which they added pads to, by the way, so it doesn't scratch your switch anymore. Uh, so they fixed that problem as well. It feels like Ben Gates kind of in the past now. Uh, besides, you know, people who bought switches last year, like me, yeah, ours might eventually bend, but, I mean, we, we were part of the first run of Switch. That just That's part of what happens. Um, I honestly think Switch itself is mostly okay. Um, I mean, I, here's the thing. Not okay, like, overall, I love Switch. My opinion of Switch hasn't really changed much other than there are a lot of things that could do better. 
But I, I like this, the the steady release of games with the indie games. There's a lot of really high quality. Like some people scoff at like the 1300 plus games. It's probably 1400 plus at this point games on Switch. And it's like, yeah, a lot of them are indie, but a lot of those indie games are really good. Um, I know when you go to the eShop, they look like garbage when you just glance and you're not seeing those major AAA games in there like you do on PlayStation. But I'm telling you, a lot of those indie games you're seeing are really, really, really damn good. You just never heard of them. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly, uh, I like the, the the focus on the indie games. I like, you know, the AAA support seems to be improving in some areas and not as much in others. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that in 2019. I would like to see more, more third-party support, but I, I want all games on Switch, so... It's not, it's not that's not realistic. I want to see game streaming not just happen in Japan, but also happen here in the U.S. and Europe and worldwide. For anyone that has good enough internet to be able to do it anyways, we should have that option instead of just saying, well, if everyone can't do it, no one can do it. Well, guess what? Even when everyone can do it, not everyone can afford to do it because they might not be able to afford the good internet or they might not be able to afford to rent the games. So again, no matter what, not everyone in Japan can afford to do it either. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I mean, my general opinion, I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's appropriate to review the switch until after the console generation's over. Cause then you have everything in scope. You have every year of releases, you have the, how, how where things were, where things progressed to, you know, maybe the Nintendo switch online service sucks now, but in year five and year six, it's suddenly really, really good. And it doesn't cost anymore. Um, there's a lot of things, uh, that I don't really think it's fair to fully judge on switch yet. Uh, what I will say is I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what the Switch is right now. I would like to see a more powerful Switch here coming out, mostly just because technology and everything's advanced. We're getting to the point where certain phones and tablets are starting to become more powerful than the Switch. It wouldn't be nice to see Switch at least keep up with the mobile space if it can't keep up with the home console space. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm perfectly happy right now with the way things are with Switch. Um, there, there's things I want to be done better. Some people can say, oh, you're such a credit game playing all that. Eh, not really. Um, it's just a lot of the positives about Switch, Just they're still positive. I don't have a reason to keep bringing them up because nothing's happened to make them even better. They're just really good. The portability, the ability to dock with your TV, the ability to you know split Joy-Cons off and play with my kids anywhere I want. All this stuff is awesome. I just, I mean, I've already talked about it. I don't really have a reason to bring it up again. Um, let's see here. Uh, next up, Like a Grape says, Are you confident when you fight Lynels in Breath of the Wild? Have you ever beaten a silver one without losing health? I have never even beat a silver one. Well... Not true. I beat a silver one, but I used one of the ancient arrows, so it doesn't really count. Um, uh, am I confident? I'm, I'm still not confident when I fight Lionels. I'm just not. It's a skill set I don't have in Breath of the Wild yet. It's a skill set that I'm hoping to improve by the time I'm done 100% in Master Mode. Because in 100% in Master Mode, I'm also counting like having to beat every single enemy type, which means I'm going to have to beat the, the silver, I'm going to have to beat the gold, etc. I'm going to have to actually beat them at least one time, and probably in the process of beating them uh, without using ancient arrows, because I don't think that counts because it makes everything go away, um, I I need to uh, get better at fighting, fighting them. Right now I avoid them. Eventually I just need to go ahead and, and uh, take them on and figure it all out. I hear once you figure it out, it's actually not that bad, but I just never took the time to figure it out, and I'm not watching videos. I don't want people teaching me how to do it. I want to figure it out on my own, and yes, here I am almost two years into Breath of the Wild, and I still haven't figured it out, and I'm not spoiled on how to figure it out. It's not really that hard to avoid spoilers, guys. If there's certain things you don't want to know, don't watch the videos and don't read the articles about it. It's not, I mean, oh man, the headline gave it away. The headline didn't give you crap. The headline gave you a tease. You don't know anything else. So, anyways... Um, let's see here. Um, so let alone, you know, without losing health, I just have to beat them. I'm not even worried about, I don't care about getting a perfect kill. You know, if that makes sense. Uh, Theme Park Life says, Nintendo Prime, would you like an open world Pokemon? Yes, 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 a thousand times. I have said many, many times over, I wanted the eighth generation of Pokemon, which is still to come, to be the Breath of the Wild of Pokemon, to be open world. It's not going to be. They already said it's not going to be like that, so... Uh, my expectations for that are gone now, but yes, I would love an open world Pokemon game, um, especially one that can bring like World of Warcraft style, bring all of the lands together and let us explore them all and make it like heck, make it an MMO open world. That would be that would be insane to me, but um, it's probably never going to happen. At least I shouldn't say never, never say never because you know things change. But um, yeah, I, I I would love to see an open world Pokemon game. Uh, MacMain says since the Switch has been around for about a year and a half now. How are the PlayStation 4 sales a year and a half in? Is the Switch selling faster still? Uh, what do you think the final sales numbers will be for the Switch? Um, so, actually, I put I did it, when I did a video on this earlier, um, after the financial report, I put up a graph. I'm, I'll see if I can find that graph again. I remember 
who posted it on Twitter. So I'm going to go see if I can find that graph and, and sh- you know, show it on screen. If I can't, um, just know that the Switch is actually about on pace with the PlayStation 4. Um, it, out, it, was, it was ahead of the PlayStation 4, then it dipped, and now it's kind of bounced back a little bit, and we'll see what happens this holiday. So within a similar time frame, Switch has impressively um, kind of stayed at the same level of PlayStation 4. Now, why is that important? Why is that impressive? Well, in that same time period, and this just runs through, what, September? Something like that. In that same time period, PlayStation 4 had two holidays. Switch had one. Switch had launch and one holiday. PlayStation 4 had two holidays and launch. So PlayStation 4, the fact that like Switch is keeping up with what PlayStation 4 did in a similar time frame is very impressive for Switch considering that it's one holiday shorter. Um, in fact, over a similar time frame, uh, once we hit the two-year mark, you know, the first 24 months of PlayStation 4, first 24 months of Switch, don't be surprised if Switch is massively ahead of where PlayStation 4 was because now, it, within that first 24 months, now we're getting to that second holiday period uh, whereas 24 months in... Uh, to to the PlayStation 4, um, they weren't necessarily at their third holiday yet. So um, it'll be they were just before the third holiday. So it'll be very very interesting to see how those numbers line up to each other. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the end of this fiscal year to kind of compare the total 20. You know, it's not even technically 24 months, right? It's really not. Um, you know, March 3rd, I guess next year would be the 24 month mark. Um, I guess comparing that. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what numbers we have. Um, or if Nintendo gives us, hey, our, the first two years of Switch did this, and then compare that. I, I think it'll be fun. There'll be plenty of people doing comparisons when, when the numbers actually come out as well. Uh, so, there's that. Um, so, the Switch isn't really selling faster. It's, it's on pace at the moment. But, again, two holidays versus one. And then, uh, what do you think the final sales numbers will be for Switch? Um, 80 million, 90 million? I mean, it could hit 100. I think uh, what Pokemon does this year and next year is going to be... Like, what happens this holiday is going to be very telling. Switch has kind of had a lackluster year for exclusives, and then it's getting Pokemon and Smash. And next year has even more big exclusive titles, including a new generation of Pokemon. So the question is, you know, I think they're going to maintain a lot of momentum coming off the holidays here. Uh, new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, as much as I'm not that excited for it, you know, in January, a lot of people are going to be. It's a 2D Mario game, one that a lot of people missed. So it's going to be a big seller. So... I think um, this holiday is going to be very, very telling. Uh, they come out of this holiday, and they... Heck, what if Nintendo exceeds 20 million Switches this fiscal year? They beat what their projections. All bets are off at that point. Um, can it match Wii? Can it beat Wii? I don't know. You know, I'll be starting to talk about DS numbers. Um, I think there's a lot of factors still in play, plus the longevity of the system. You know, are they going to count the Switch Pro as part of the same generation, uh, if a Switch Pro even exists? Um, so is Switch 2 going to be the same family of systems and be all counted together, or will that be a new generation? It, there's a lot of unknowns at this point. There's a lot of we don't know if Switch is going to stay this viable for the next four years. Um, for this year and next year, I think Switch is going to do awesome. But after next year, what's next? Nintendo's kind of blowing their load here next year, so so what's, what's going to keep it going? Uh, and we'll, We don't know yet because we're still thinking about 2019. We're not even done with 2018. How can we think of 2020 yet? So... Well, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, I think 80, 90 million is uh is respectable, assuming that they actually maintain momentum throughout the generation, which is a pretty damn big assumption. Uh, let's see here. Gazenja Fox says Shintaro Furukawa recently stated that he wanted more genres and diverse games on Switch. What genres do you currently feel are missing from Switch, and do you feel those would be best handled by new IP or existing Nintendo properties? Um, first person shooters. Multiplayer wise, we have some some single player ones with Doom and Wolfenstein. Uh, but I mean, Doom's got some sick multiplayer. But we don't, you know, the Call of Duties of the world, the Battlefields of the world, Battlefronts of the world. We, we don't have any game like that on Switch. Um, so we are missing out on on that. That's a genre that we just don't have. And I don't think Nintendo is where we should turn to for a lot of that stuff. I think uh, we need to be looking at third parties trying to bring more support to Switch. Um, here's the thing: like wherever I think Nintendo's lacking in something doesn't mean I think Nintendo should be the ones to do something about the fact they're lacking in that. I think Nintendo needs to convince third parties to come over to fill in that stuff. I think Nintendo's really good at what they do, and they should just focus on that and get better at that, and then bring in the third parties to fill in the gaps. But, I mean, that's just that's just my opinion on things. Um, I'm always curious to hear your guys'. Um, as for new IP or existing Nintendo properties, I always love new IP, but, I mean... 
when's the last time we had a new action adventure game from Nintendo? It's like Zelda and I mean, there's been a bunch in the past, but Zelda and what today? So it'd be cool to see them do it. Like they, how can they have a zillion platformers but only one action adventure game? I mean, so I would like to see another action adventure game, but um, that's just me. I, obviously, I love Zelda, so I think they could do really good with another you know game, kind of like that. Um, you know, it could be even sci-fi or something. Let's see here. Uh, the Eighth Thark says, "Are you okay with more AAA 2D games being released, or do they all need to be 3D to, 3D to get enough sales to be viable?" Well, let me see. The only one that really comes to mind off the top of my head is, is Octopath Traveler, right? Um, and that sold over a million copies really fast. Uh, if it did not have shortages, it probably would have sold 1.5 to 3 million. Who knows? Uh, shortages really killed the momentum of that game fast. So. I do think um, that that's obviously plenty. It massively exceeded their their sales expectations. So I don't think that all AAA games need to be 3D. I think that's a misnomer. I think that how, how Octopath Traveler did should have told people, uh, yeah, you can do AAA quality 2D games and do phenomenal. Uh, Nintendo's been proving that for years. So I don't know why people think it's not viable outside of Nintendo. In fact, Nintendo Switch is the perfect platform to put them on. Because Nintendo's really good at that. So, anyways, uh, I, I think there should be more of them, not less. We have plenty of AAA 3D games. The AAA 2D games are a little bit cheaper to make, but you could add some AAA elements to those games um, and, and really make them pop and shine. And I want to see more Octopad Travelers and stuff like that. So, yes, I think they're perfectly viable. I think, obviously, if you're looking at sales for Red Dead Redemption, um, stuff like that, you might have to go all out for but I think to hit you know two, three, four million, you could probably you could do that with a you can do that with a two D AAA style game. So I think they're perfectly viable. Uh, Sonic Forces t- uh, twenty seventeen says, do you think Panic Button could port Spiral Reignited Trilogy to the Switch? Of course they could. The question is, are they? Probably not. <laughs> so Panic Button can port anything. It's just a question of uh, does Activision want it to be ported, and is that the company they want to work with? Um, so sure they could do it. But I think a better question is, are they doing it? And I don't think they are. Um, let's see here. Dynamic Kirby says, here's a question. I didn't answer it in a live stream, but let's talk about it again. Can Nintendo be successful if they release a console at the same price as the PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 5 and Xbox One or Xbox Scarlet? Whatever system that may be, either the Switch Pro or a brand new next-gen Switch, people were skeptical of Switch beforehand. Now that people have warmed up to the idea of a hybrid console, would they be willing to spend 400 plus on one regardless of its hardware power? It's possible, yet unlikely we will get a Switch as powerful as the PlayStation 4 Pro by 2021. But in my opinion, a console's value shouldn't be determined solely by its hardware power. I agree on that front. Um, some people say that the OG Switch is overpriced on the console side of things. And while I agree to an extent, I still believe it's worth the price because of the sheer quant- quantity and quality of content. I feel like the possibility that Nintendo can work with NVIDIA and help fund a new Switch that's not necessarily 4K, but can still play most of the next-gen games at, say, 1080p or 900p is very feasible, but perhaps not for under 399 The question is, would it be successful? Um, I'd buy one. I know a lot of people that would buy one. But for the mass success, $300 and under is like the sweet point, right? Nintendo's proven that. Other companies have proven that. $300 and under is kind of that sweet spot. Uh, I know that, you know, PlayStation did it at $399, but it helped that Xbox was, was tanking as well because they, they were out there at $499 and um, confused people with their marketing. So um, it drove a lot of the Xbox fans that usually spend a little bit more on their consoles to PlayStation um, and you know, PlayStation fans maintained the Wii audience fell off. So it was, it's a very interesting uh, prospect. I think uh, there's definitely room for a $400 version of Switch, um, but it, I don't think it can be an instead of proposition, right? So if it's a $400 version of Switch um, that gets all the AAA games, um, but all of the exclusive games are required to support the original Switch, then I think it's a vi- it has a viable place in the marketplace. If it's a g- entirely new generation of Switch for four hundred, um, I don't think that's going to work. I think the price point is going to be too high for most consumers to consider upgrading. Um, but that's just me. Um, that's just my thoughts on that front. Um, I think if it's not a replacement, it's just a hey, you do get some AAA content on this, you might not on the other, but all exclusives are across the board. 
I think it's viable then. And that also warms people up to the idea of paying more for something better down the line. So when that system drops to 300 like I think Nintendo should do iterative stuff. You know, they should do, they, they, they have the Switch now. They should release a new Switch at 300 drop the current one down to 250 or 200 release then a new one at 300 you know, four years later, three years later. Um, you know, drop that one down, drop the OG Switch down to 100 and have things backwards compatible for like two or three generations and basically do the mobile phone thing. Um, not yearly, of course. You know, every every three years, I think, is a good cycle. But that's me. That's if I ran Nintendo. I don't. So um, let's see here. Uh, Edward Norton uh, said, With the popularity and money Pokemon Go made, uh, did you not expect with the hype of Let's Go Pikachu uh, that it'll be a success? I always thought it'd be a success. The question is, how big a success would it be? It was always going to move millions and millions of copies. That was never a question. Pokemon, almost anything with Pokemon name on it does that. Um, the question is, was it going to be a massive success or was it just going to do okay? Was it going to be below other remakes, you know, or, you know, that have done like 12 million, 14 million, was it going to be below those or was it going to be, you know, at sun and moon numbers? Was it going to be at gen one numbers? Was it going to be higher? Um, the question was I've never, will it be a success? It's how big of a success would it be? Would it be a big enough success to justify making more let's go games or would it be, um, not a big enough success where it doesn't justify them making more of them. And it's also an interesting proposition since it's the first, you know, Pokemon game you can play natively, technically, on your TV. Um, and I know there's, like, the Game Boy accessories and stuff in the past, but out of the box you can play, you know, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee on your TV, and it's the first Pokemon game, uh, full-fledged Pokemon game you could do that with. So there's also that as well. There's the fact that the install base is a little smaller on Switch compared to when Pokemon usually comes out. So there's a lot of factors in play, but, um, you know, the numbers right now are looking very impressive. I'll probably get into a future, you know, Prime News tomorrow or something, but the numbers are looking good. So, I, you know, I didn't know. I was expecting, you know, 8 to 10 million, uh, which I thought were safe, a safe bet. Um, that might be, have been undershooting it by, like, half or more of what the actual sales are going to be so uh we'll have to wait and see but yeah i mean just because pokemon go made a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean that audience translates but statistically it looks like more of that audience is translated than a lot of people think but uh we'll wait and see um what i do know is that that let's go pikachu is a nice proving ground for nintendo's concept of mobile phone games nintendo has always said from day one with the mobile phone games the idea was Grab a new audience on mobile phone and then convince them why they want the better version of that game on a Nintendo system. And Pokemon Go to Let's Go Beach or Let's Go Eevee, I think, is a very, very interesting use case for that. Yes, we've already seen Pokemon Sun and Moon and other games to get an advantage from Pokemon Let's Go, but we haven't seen anything specifically target that audience until now. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how that translates. I also think it's interesting for new Super Mario Brothers U. You know, some of the Super Mario Run audience going to translate to that. Um... I think we're, we're in an interesting time here where we're going to see if Nintendo's idea of mobile games pushing their, their consoles is uh, going to be a viable proposition. No one else has been able to pull it off, uh, despite some efforts from Sony and Xbox. So uh, maybe Nintendo's found the winning formula. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, w. James MCI says, uh, Is there any game that is out now on other consoles you would love to see on Nintendo Switch? On the opposite side of that question, are there is there Nintendo exclusive games you would like to see on other consoles? I mean, you know, for exclusives, you know, I'd like to see like The Last of Us, uh, stuff like that on Switch. I'd like to see, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 is not an exclusive, but I'd like to see that on Switch. I would like to see I, pretty much everything on Switch, if I'm being completely honest. There's not a game I don't want on Switch. As for um, a game I would like to see on other consoles, uh, I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a very good candidate that I would like to see on an Xbox or a PlayStation. One, just because of the frame rate issues. And two, I'm very curious what Monolith Soft, with that visual style, could do on more powerful hardware. Um, a lot of Nintendo stuff, the way they make it, makes it where, yeah, it'd be higher resolution, might be higher frame rate, but looking visual-wise and gameplay-wise, it's going to be pretty similar on other platforms, whereas like something like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 could make a massive leap from like Switch to, to Xbox or PlayStation 4. Um, you know, anything that has like that more realistic kind of art style is something I always want to see what could happen on more powerful hardware. So I think that's the one I would like to see make a jump. It's not going to, plus it would help with sales. It reached 1.5 on switch. Would it have hit three if it was universal? I don't know. Um, Dogie log says the real question is why am I in seeing this when I unsubbed? Um, (laughs) 
the the real question isn't why are you seeing it when you unsub. The question is why are the people that are sub not seeing it? Why are my near forty thousand subscribers not seeing my content? That's the real question. I mean, I'm sure you know maybe there's like fifteen twenty k of dead accounts that just happens. But okay, then why are the twenty thousand subscribers not not seeing it? You know, I who knows? I no trying to figure out YouTube is weird. Uh, Doggy log. If I had to guess, you must have interacted with the video. Hit the like. Did you hit a dislike button and comment? That that told that told YouTube, hey, this person likes to interact. And look, you just commented on this post, so YouTube sees it as, oh, look, he likes to interact. So it's going to keep showing you my content. If you don't want to see it, you got to start ignoring it when it comes up, because um, that's just the way YouTube works. So uh, the more you ignore it, the more you don't interact with it, the less you'll see of it. The more you interact with it, the more you're going to see. That's that's how YouTube determines things, um, subbed or unsubbed. Uh, Taylor Bone says. Uh, is Let's Go going to be compatible with the Pokemon Bank? I don't know. I don't think it currently is. I do not think it's currently compatible. Doesn't mean it won't be. It's possible by the time Generation 8 comes around, it open up Let's Go to the Pokemon Bank so you could transfer your Pokemon from Let's Go to the bank so then you can get them into uh, into that. And I think that's actually what's even more troubling about the fact that um, there's no backup saves. You can't back up this with the cloud saves. Um, you also can't back it up with the Pokemon Bank right now. There's no way to back up Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, as far as I'm aware. Maybe someone will correct me and be like, oh, you can use the bank. I just didn't realize it. I'm not far enough in the game yet, so maybe you can use the bank. But as far as I'm aware, you can't. Uh, so that means right now, everything I'm doing in this game could be lost. I mean, you could transfer some... I think you could transfer... I think you could transfer from Pokemon Go to, to Let's Go. I don't know if you can transfer from Let's Go to Pokemon Go. I don't know. I have to get past the fifth gym, and uh, that's when you can start doing that, and then I'll experiment with that, but... Um, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't support Pokemon Make yet, but they have not said it won't. So that's why it's like they, they might be leaving the door open to add it as an update later uh, as we get closer to Generation 8. Um, all right, the following questions come from Twitter. Uh, the first one's from at TDome85, and he says, After revisiting Pokemon for the first time in a long time with the new game, what are your hopes for the one coming out in 2019? Um, that I enjoy it at least half as much as I enjoy this. Bottom line is with how much I enjoy this, the 2019 one is going to be massively complex in comparison. Um, and uh, it's going to be a lot to wrap my head around. But if I can enjoy it even half as much as this, that'll be nice. But again, I'm not done with this. I might, not, might end up hating Let's Go Eevee by the time I'm done with it. So I think I, that's a better question for me to answer once I have played like through this game. Um, you know, enough of it anyways, where I can be like, you know what, now I can formulate an opinion and now I can think about what the next game, what things from this game I want in the next game, what things I don't, uh, maybe I want nothing from this game in the next game, etc. Uh, so I, I, I don't really have any hopes at this point beyond just hopefully enjoying it. Uh, at Comatose22 says, what's your personal game of the year this year? Is it one of the nominees? If not, which game is it and why? Well, the thing is, I can only really base it off games I've played. Um, I didn't really play any of the nominees. So I can't really, you know, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 or God of War is probably going to win, but um, I don't know, you know, I haven't, didn't play them to really put a judgment in. Uh, the favorite, my favorite game, I mean, is it Let's Go Eevee right now? It's not, I, I haven't played enough of that to qualify it yet. Um, probably my favorite game so far this year that I have played, I mean, I don't know if you can see it on camera up here. Uh, well, you can't, it's kind of cut off his, uh, well, I guess I got the disc right here. Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler uh, has been my favorite game I've played this year. You could say that means I didn't play enough games. Probably true. Probably should have played some more games. But um, that's been my favorite game this year. Uh, do I think that means it's good enough for Game of the Year? Probably not, but I didn't play the other games that qualify. So. Um, let's see here. Uh, at that Tommy guy says, Do you think the core Pokemon game on Switch will use the same mechanics as Let's Go? I'm talking about the one Joy-Con control, support for the Pokeball controller, throwing motion to catch Pokemon, etc. Um, let me see. Um, I, it's not going to use the same mechanics. You're going to be battling Pokemon. You're going to be battling wild Pokemon in the game. So that that's number one. Uh, does that mean they couldn't have you battle Pokemon and then use the Let's Go mechanics on top of that? That's a possibility. That's something no one's talking about. Everyone's talking about how, oh, the way you're catching Pokemon could replace the wild battles. No one's talking about having the wild battles and having this mechanic. They can actually both be in the game at the same time, right? Like, they could coexist. One doesn't have to negate the other. So that could happen. But I don't think the motion controls, if they include them, if they let the Pokeball Plus work, if they let the single Joy-Con controls work, 
I do not think that they are going to be as strict with it as this time. You'll be able to use your Pro Controller. You'll be able to use Twin Sticks. You'll be able to use all that stuff. I don't think they're going to be... If they include those mechanics at all, they're not going to restrict you this time. Um, but you got to remember, they, they literally said that Let's Go was made for the TV. It's weird because it, for a lot of people it plays better in handheld. But they said um, you know, th- it was made for the TV, whereas the 2019 games are made for on the go. So traditional controls are going to be kind of the, the standard across the board. I don't think they're going to focus on motion controls at all. Uh, could they add them as an option? Maybe. But I, I honestly think motion controls are probably not going to be in the 2019 game. Um, let's see here. Uh, at uh, BAF, uh, Ray Burger says... When do you think the Metro Prime 4 hype train starts boarding? Didn't it start boarding last E3 2017 when the logo popped up? Pretty sure that's when the hype train started. Uh, Obviously, I think the idea is when are we going to see it? Um, Next up, best opportunity is the Game Awards. Otherwise, sometime next year. So, could be E3. Could be uh, Nintendo Direct. Could be whenever. Nintendo doesn't tell us when they're going to do these things. So, Uh, let's see here. And our last question comes from at preview nineteen ninety seven. Says, "Will you eat Pokemon? Which one is your favorite? Uh, if Pokemon were real, chances are there would probably be some sort of Pokemon that I would eat because um, Pokemon are animals, basically, right? So um, we eat animals in real life. We eat cows and chickens and stuff like that. So there probably would be some Pokemon we eat." Um, as for what I would probably eat, I mean, it, it's hard to know because I obviously have never ate a Pokemon to know what they taste like. Um, I can imagine, you know, Pidgeotto or, or one of the bird Pokemon um, being really popular for eating because it might taste like, like chicken. Um, so stuff that tastes like that, I could see that, you know, being something I would eat because uh, I like chicken. But I honestly don't know because I don't know what Pokemon tastes like. I do know that in Detective Pikachu's trailer, the Pokemon look utterly fantastic. But um, I don't know. I don't. I, would they be edible even because they have all these mystical abilities and those abilities as it affect the quality of the meat or the ability for the meat to be edible? Are there Pokemon that actually eat each other? I mean, we probably won't see that in that movie, but animals eat each other all the time. Like, what do these Pokemon eat? They can't just eat berries all the time, right? There won't be any berries left in the world. <laughs> so, oh, candy. Sorry, who use the candies? Like, come on, candy and berries. That's it. Nah, it doesn't seem like very good substance for animals. I mean, the berries are fine, but like, there's no way the world has enough berries to support all those animals. All right. I think that's going to do it for this week for Prime Answers. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, probably a longer episode. I'm not even sure what the total length is yet because I, I haven't edited and cut out things that need to be cut out. But thank you for tuning in. I had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, let's go Eevee, let's go Pikachu's out now. Next up is Smash Bros. Let me know if you want more game reviews. Let me get one of your questions. Enter our giveaway down in the description. I'll give feedback on the channel, how you think I'm doing, ways you think I could improve. Um, anything from this show to any other videos I do uh, to how I present things, my editing, whatever it is. Let me know because I constantly want to make sure I'm making Nintendo Prime better day after day, month after month, year after year. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next one.